go get your coffee? Did you get your pee break in? Because we're back. We are. We're back and we have a treat for you all today. That's right, everybody. The day has finally come for all you Slashaholics. The day we finally do a sequel. That's right, Jenny. And I think I have the perfect movie franchise for uh, to tear into first. One of the few franchises with only three entries into the franchise. I guess technically four. I mean, if you count the, uh, the, the remake. Yeah. Good. And I'd like to count it. I think it was pretty damn good. Oh, what franchise is that, though, that we're talking about, Miss Hallie? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Evil Dead! That's right. It's about damn time. Groovy. Yeah, I 100% agree with that statement. And to be honest, we wanted to do this one when we did the first Evil Dead, but you it gotta... I kind of begged Hallie if we could just do two. Like, skip one and just do two. You gotta start with the first one, though. You do, you do. And there's major differences between the first one and the second one. Like, right. in tone, in just everything about them are very different. Right, but the whole reason why we wanted to do this one first, because out of all of them, this is personally our favorite. It's my favorite sequel ever made of ever, ever. I think it's one of my favorite horror films. It's if not in my like, top three favorite horror yeah, films agreed. of all time, for sure. And I think it's in most fans' top favorite. Well, I mean, you know, <coughs> it's least. probably I would say among Evil Dead fans, most hardcore fans that I know, Evil Dead Two is their favorite. But for a lot of nonchalant, like, you know, wishy-washy fans that aren't true dedicated Evil Dead fans or even like true us. horror fans <laughs> out there. Yeah. We're talking about the casual fan, the casual viewer that watches Evil Dead 1 and watches Evil Dead 2 and wait. And they're like, why is he driving back to the cabin? We're here to tell you why he's driving back to that cabin. Because in this one, the first seven and a half minutes is technically a, a redo of Evil Dead 1. And the reason for that, though, is because um, because of financial issues and different things that happened with the first film, um, they lost the rights to use anything from the first film in the second film. So they had to do what we'll call a, a recap of the first movie so that they could explain how Ash got to where he was, how he ended up in the cabin, mm -hmm. and basically kind of give us a little lead up to what is the second film. Right. So if you remember correctly, Ash in the first one got smacked by some evil force, and that's where it ended. At the very end. Yep. So this first seven and a half minutes is just a retelling, a very short, quick retelling of what happens before that, and then the rest of the film is the true sequel to it. Yeah, they did kind of leave some things out of the recap too. Yeah, like the like fact the that there other was like other friends and you know there. like his family. Like, wasn't isn't Linda one of his? Isn't Linda his sister? No, not Linda. Uh, Cheryl. Cheryl. Isn't, isn't Cheryl mm -hmm. his sister? Yep. Yeah. So I mean, come on, we left a lot of things out. But the important thing is, is that first seven and a half minutes leads us to what is Evil Dead Two. Mm -hmm. So, let's get into it. Ash Williams and his girlfriend Linda take a romantic vacation to a seemingly abandoned cabin in the woods. Is this just like a trope? It's that... a trope created in this exact franchise. It's something that Evil Dead 1 did, and now Evil Dead 2 is establishing that trope even further. I mean, was that just something to do in the 80s, though, was to go stay in a cabin? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wasn't mean... really alive enough to know. Well, no, it was. <laughs> While in the cabin, Ash plays a tape of an archaeologist, Mr. Dr. Raymond Nobody. Nobody? <laughs> Noby. <laughs> he's nobody. I mean, he yeah, really kind of is. Kind of. He has nobody. At least no in body. the first <laughs> In the first film, he really is nobody. We, we really never... Right, they, ne they never nobody. establish his name. Yep. Raymond Noby. A N O W B Y. No B. The cabin's previous inhabitant reciting passages from the Book of the Dead, aka the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, which we have several of those. Yeah, we did say we were going to try and fit as many into the into the set as we could, but our set's just not big enough for all the uh, the Necronomicons that we've got. Right. Which Doctor Raymond Noby apparently found while on an archaeological dig in. Europe, I believe. Yeah, I, I believe I it's. So. I believe it's someplace in the UK. Yeah. 
So the recorded incantation unleashes an evil force, also known as the Kandarian Demon, that kills and later possesses Linda, turning her into a deadite. What's or what we will now... We know now as a deadite. Mm -hmm. um, it, that name does get established in this film. So we're going to go ahead and end. call them deadites. Yep. I think we called them deadites in the last video. Either. It was Even. just easier. Yeah. I mean, anybody that knows, knows. Yeah. So Ash is then forced to decapitate Linda with a shovel and bury her in a shallow grave next to the cabin. And at dawn, the evil force throws Ash out through the woods. So I, I have... a. a question, comment, concern with that. They're staying at someone else's property and he decides to bury his dead girlfriend there? Yeah, well, you know, you gotta do something with the body. You don't wanna just lay around. I understand that, but... Otherwise, it might be, uh, you know, inclined to get up and dance for us. <laughs> Which, <laughs> by the way, they did drive from Michigan to Tennessee. Yeah. So he buried her and not even in her home state. No, no. It shows you how much he really cares about her. And that is basically how the original film ended. Really not with the decapitation or no, any of the weird no, stuff. No, but it does, does end up having to kill all of his friends at the end of the first film. He kills all of his friends and he gets smacked in the face with some unseen, what evil we're assuming force. is evil force. I mean, it's, it's the way the way it's shot. It looks really cool. And honestly. really, we are... The, the shaky cam, which mm -hmm. was established in the first film and really used a lot in the second film as well, um, was something that Sam Raimi created, for one thing. And um, part of the problem is that they really just... I mean, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't get the rights to the film, so they gave us the recap. But not only that, they had to create an entire um, different production company to release the film. Was because it like Rosebud Productions? Rosebud, Rosebud Films or something like that. Something like that. Uh, Dino De Laurentiis, who literally produced this film and backed it financially, by law and by his contracts, um, was not allowed to release anything that was unrated. So he f made this kind mm. of shadow company in order to release this movie without getting in trouble. Um, and they released it unrated, knowing that they they really did try to get a, a secure. An there R was rating. no way in hell they were going to get an R rating no. with the they amount of maybe, blood. Well, they thought maybe doing the different colors of blood would change things, but no, no, no. Anyways, so let's get into what really happens in Evil Dead Two. So the true start of Evil Dead Two is when Ash gets thrown across through the woods by the evil entity and wakes up possessed yeah i mean for lack of a better term he is a, a deadite and he is somehow inexplicably turned back to normal i think it's later stated or at, at least partially established that they can't function in sunlight or yes. some shit like that correct so or at least in daylight although right. that does change later in the series if you want to look at Ash vs. Evil Dead because they definitely well, it, it, come out during the day. It changes later in, when he goes back in time. Too. Well, that's true. Very true. He attempts to flee the area but finds the bridge of the cabin has been destroyed, which it, it is very gnarled and looks like a hand holding him in place. Kind of like that. Kind of like this weird painting that Jenny did in the back. Which, wow. I, yeah. I don't know. It's not the best, but you get the picture. I can't believe none of you guys out there were able to guess what she did. I know. Come on. Although I will say the Hills Have Eyes was a good guess. You know, I mean, that's, I could see that being a, yeah, a guess from that. And one of my friends also commented maybe that it was um, from Midsummer with yeah. the Atastupa, but nope, yeah. not either of those. The spirit chases Ash back to the cabin where Linda's revived head attacks him and bites his hand. He runs to the or orc shed. Work shed. Uh, where this <laughs> body attacks him with the chainsaw that he was desperately looking for to dismember her head. But he overpowers and slashes the deadite Linda to death. Yeah. For Completely dismember her. Second time. Yes. Yes. Well, and and I, you know. Um, this film not only does it establish some new rules as far as the Deadites go, 
but um, it really solidifies some rules as far as the Deadites go. And we learn that they almost, not just decapitating, is going to take care of them because Linda clearly came back. So uh, Ash is quickly figuring out that things are not the same mm. as they... And it, things don't die the way they should die. So his right hand becomes possessed. <laughs> after being bitten by Linda, and tries to kill him. But he severs his hand with a chainsaw <laughs> before attempting to shoot it with a shotgun. And the hand mocks him and ultimately escapes. With a big... Mm. <laughs> it was it was probably... A, I love the sequence with his, like him like breaking the dishes over his head with the possessed hand. <laughs> you know what's funny is that... Um, this movie is definitely comedy. Comedy. Comedy horror. There's lots of gore, lots of blood, and some scary stuff. But the first film was definitely exclusively like horror. horror. Like there was a couple of little funny bits, but not not, not like the this. way that this is. Not this like is this. this movie is literally set up like a Three Stooges movie. <laughs> it's very slapstick. -y. It is very slapstick. It's very it's a lot of physical humor on Bruce Campbell's part. Um, but and he did all off. of it himself. That he was did. no stunt double. No stunt doubles. He did everything himself. I mean, yeah, it's it's just it's everything that I hoped for. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nobi's daughter Annie and her research partner Ed Gently, J Gently, J Ed Getley, Getley, yeah, eh, whatever. Ed Getley returns from the dig with missing pages from the Necronomicon. <laughs> If you're hearing coughing in the background of this video, we do apologize. Our producer is getting over uh, a nasty bout with the, the Rona. Yeah. Second time, right? Second time. Yeah. Right. Second time having COVID. And unfortunately, she's still got that nasty cough. Mm. She just can't shake it. That's all right. You'll get rid of it soon. We love you. <laughs> they, uh, they come to the bridge to find it destroyed, and they enlist the repairman, Jake, and his girlfriend, Bobby, Bobby Joe! Joe! <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that scene. We'll get to that. Uh, to show them another route, because he just remembered that for $100, there's an actual trail. Okay, carry my bags. Shoot, that deal. Didn't know she had a fucking trunk. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> he really got uh, got himself in, yeah. in a little bit of trouble there, didn't right. he? So they show... Annie and Ed the way to the cabin and find an embattled Ash covered in blood thinking that he has murdered Annie's parents and they basically beat the crap out of him and throw and him down throw him in the, the basement. Throw him in the fruit cellar. Gotta love that. The four new arrivals listen to the rest of Nobi's recording detailing how his wife Henrietta was possessed by the Kandarian demon and that he killed her and buried her in the cellar. I could not bring myself to dismember her corpse. I buried her in the cellar. God help me, I buried her in the earthen floor of the fruit cellar. Oops. Henrietta is now a deadite. Possesses Ed. And Ash has to dismember him with an axe. So we after get, they get his ass back up out of the cellar, yeah, they get they finally get Ash back upstairs. But I mean, you know, you got Henrietta down in the basement with him, mm -hmm. uh, deadite, and then Ed becomes a, a deadite. deadite. So yeah, things are getting a little evil Ed. Evil Ed. Things are getting a little bit dicey here. Bobby Joe tries to escape, but demonically possessed trees. What is with the demonically possessed trees? I don't know. I, you know, the funny thing about the demonically possessed trees is that Sam Raimi has come out recently and said, you know, that was maybe not something that I should have done. In the first one. In the first this one. This one's not as bad. This one's not as explicit. Um, as far as, like, what the trees are doing. She just right. gets attacked by the trees. Right, she gets attacked by the trees, and they do kill her, but they don't rape her, unlike right. the first one. However, in the 2013 one, we do get a tree rape as well. So, yes. you know, I mean, he really must not have felt that bad about it. I mean, I mean, no, but whatever. <laughs> Annie translates two of the Necronomicon pages before Jake turns on them and throws the pages into the cellar, forcing them at gunpoint to go out into the woods to find Bobby Joe! 
redneck. <laughs> Ash becomes possessed again. So this is his third time yep. being possessed. Yep. And he attacks Jake. Uh, Annie retreats into the cabin and accidentally stabs Jake, mistaking him for the possessed Ash, before Henrietta kills him. Oops. Deadite Ash then tries to kill Annie, but returns to his normal self upon seeing Linda's necklace. Something about Linda's necklace snaps him out of it. By the way, I just have to point out that the uh, effects makeup for Bruce Campbell's dead eye, the white eyes with like the sunkenness which, and everything like speaking that. Speaking of which, every one of the dead eyes when they wore those glasses or those uh, lenses, we talked about this in the last film, they're completely blind when they have those on. They cannot see anything. So it not only do we have incredible physical humor, but you have to add into the fact that they were filming this in... Uh, not even in a cabin. This was filmed in a high school gymnasium, but um, it was a set, a cabin set that they built in the gymnasium. And it was dark. It was dark. And it was, I mean, they, they were under, you know, extreme circumstances and they couldn't see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe not as bad of circumstances as the first film when they were filming that one, mm -hmm. where they were literally like burning furniture to keep themselves warm. Right. Um, however, it, it not much better circumstances as far as the prosthetics and things like that. Right, right. Ash tries to convince Annie that he is okay. Fights Annie, with her. Are you okay? <laughs> Annie tries to kill him multiple times before he finally does get the axe away from her and <laughs> And with Annie's help, Ash modifies the chainsaw, which I still trying to figure that one out, but whatever. He needed to be a sawed off. Let him be. I'm not touching. <laughs> but they attach it to his, what should be a bloody stump, but there's no blood. No. Uh, of his right arm, and he cuts the barrels of the shotgun off, making it a sawed-off shotgun. Mm -hmm. Groovy. After finding the Mrs. Pa missing pages of the Necronomicon in the cellar, Ash kills Henrietta as she's screaming at him. <laughs> Swallow your soul! I swallow your soul! I swallow your soul! <laughs> <laughs> so, the trees outside of the cabin begin to destroy the cabin. And... <laughs> Annie reveals that she has only read the first half of the incantation and attempts to finish the second half of the incantation. So as she reads it, Ash's severed hand uses the Kandarian dagger to stab her in the back. That thing right mm -hmm. there. Well, a variation of it. A variation not... of it. This is actually the one from the first, first film. Form. In the second one, it's very similar, only the whole dagger is made out of a spine. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. <laughs> You're gonna have to make one of those. I'm gonna have to make one. I just need to wait until I can find the right supplies. She manages to complete the incantation before succumbing to her wound. The incantation opens up a swirling temporal vortex. Yes, that's right. Yep. Temporal. We're dealing with time travel time now. Time traveling, baby! <laughs> Which not only draws in the demons, but also Ash and his Oldsmobile Delta 88. Oh, the classic. Right. Ash and his Oldsmobile land in the Middle Ages. Of all places. So, and now, I, so now this isn't just a horror film. This isn't just a comedy film. It's sci-fi. It's a fantasy epic. And a sci-fi because we travel through time. Thank you, Sam Raimi, for yes. wearing genres. Thank you. So Ash and his Oldsmobile land in the Middle Ages, and a group of knights confront him and initially mistake him for a for deadite. deadite. They call him a deadite. That's the first time we hear the term deadite. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're quickly distracted when a real harpy-like deadite appears. Which, by the way, uh, this is during the daylight. So yeah. that breaks that rule of daylight. They can't be in the daylight. Yep. So. Ash blasts the harpy-like deadite out of the sky with his shotgun, and they hail him as the hero who has come to save them, causing him to break down and scream in anguish, realizing that 
in the Necronomicon, he was pictured as the hero and knows that he fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's where we're left. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the film. And we know he really does stay in, back in the Dark Ages and we get an entire film. We get an entire another film that we will cover very soon. I'm sure. Because we're going to wrap up the Evil Dead series here For sure. soon. For sure. Called Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness. And actually... Originally, this movie was pitched as Evil Dead 2, Evil Dead and the Army of Darkness. Um, I think originally they wanted to do the time travel way earlier in the series and instead spread it out over two movies. But uh, yeah, originally I think there was supposed to be more time traveling and more time spent in the Middle Ages uh, in this film, but it ultimately got changed. The funny thing that I, I really love about Army of Darkness, the third one in this series, is that it's Bruce Campbell's only major motion picture starring role. Everything else he's done has been either independently And he plays or, two roles in this film too. Or he's not top billed. Yeah. This is the only one that's, I mean, it's produced by Universal <laughs> and he's top billed. So it's the only one that's that he's done that's majorly funded. Yeah. Yep. And well worth the watch too. I highly suggest that you watch Army of Darkness because it's mm -hmm. a fun one. It's a fun one. I wouldn't classify that in, as it's horror, not horror by any means. No, I mean, I get, excuse me, there is some, you know, skeletal stuff and scary stuff towards the end and, you know, like the Bond I'm, Witch that, that he's got to fight in the beginning and everything. I mean, there's there's plenty of creepy, creepy, not gory scary. stuff, but definitely not scary. No. I mean, the skeletons are playing bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> With no bonds. Yeah. Hey, whatever. I Sam Raimi can do no wrong. Anyways, with uh, that, Oz the Great and Powerful. Okay, okay. Sam Raimi can do no wrong. <laughs> okay, so how do you rate this? I mean, I mean, if I could give it like a million machetes up, I would. This is. Uh, special, special bloody machine. Special effects uh, galore from K and B effects, which is and one Tom of Sullivan, our... who worked on the first film mm. and did all the special effects. He did a lot of effects for this one, especially the stop motion stuff. He's incredible at stop I motion. I mean, K and B is like they are the go tos for gore yeah. effects in horror movies nowadays. They've done everything from this. They did Dawn of the Dead. They did. Uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even the most recently, Black Phone was. Um, they did mm -hmm. all the effects for that and did the mask work for that, which that mask was incredible. Mm -hmm. I love the interchangeable parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but with all of that, with like, I mean, we love Sam Raimi as a director. We love Bruce Cam. Bruce Campbell's one of our. I mean, he's he's the only final guy. He's my chin. <laughs> He's yes. the only final there's, guy. There's other final guys, but nobody that really stands out. Nobody whose name I could call out ever. He was definitely the first, like, final guy. But, I mean, on top of all of that, you, you think back to, like, successful horror movie franchises. What is the character that stands out? You have Halloween, Michael Myers. You have yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy. You have... Not, uh, Friday the 13th, Jason. It's Those are all the bad villains. Guys. The villains this is always a stand hero. Out. Yeah. This is a hero horror story. Yeah. So and I, there's not very many stories that can mm -mm. stand up like that. And this... I give this a bloody machete straight to the fucking sky. Yep, same here, same here. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. And once you've seen it, you need to see it again. And again. And again. You'll never and catch again. up to us, but... No. Because I probably watch it, like, once a month. I maybe, mean, maybe not that often, but I mean, it definitely goes on in background a lot. <laughs> to a me, lot. this whole series, uh, specifically the first two, Evil Dead 1 and 2, they are very fall movies, just mm -hmm. because of the setting and the cabin sure. in the woods with the leaves sure. and everything. Like, mm -hmm. It feels like It doesn't fall. feel like summer. You no. know, like, a cabin mm -hmm. in the woods kind of could be like a summer trip sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, And, I mean, how many times have we gone to cabins and stuff like that in, say, the... Friday the 13th series, mm -hmm. you know? And Which those that, all feel very summery. Because it's summer camp. Exactly. This Whereas is very this fall is very fall, that you get the fall leaves, you get the fall, like, I mean, it's just, like, all the trees don't really have a whole lot of leaves mm -hmm. on them. It's mm -hmm. very, like, dead looking. And right. Which, I mean, it just caters to the whole spooky, eerie yes. vibe of it. Yes. I mean, it's just so good. Right. 
So yes, two bloody machetes straight up from us, and mm -hmm. we will get this out of here. Woo! Nice hit. Yeah, that's why I tossed together. <laughs> Well, what are we doing next, Tally? I believe we have another holiday coming up, and we just cannot go through a holiday we without can't. doing a holiday we horror. We love film. holiday horror, film. don't we? But you know what? I think it's time that we finally, finally delve into a group or a, a, a production company um, that we haven't touched yet, who is a very important part of the horror genre in general. Oh, who would that be? Let's see. We've touched on like K and B effects, and I mean, who's ready for something out of Tromaville? I am. I know I am. I will always love something from Troma. So, since we've got a holiday coming up, and it's Mother's Day, we're gonna do the Troma Films Mother's Day movie. It's a weird one. It's it, wacky. It is. It is out there. It's crazy, but it's fun. This is in the same vein that, like, April Fool's Day Yeah, was. for sure. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, it's got, like, kind of the same look to it, even. And mm. definitely the same kind of quirky, weird vibe, too. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. 100%. So, make sure you watch Mother's Day, and then come back with us in two, two weeks. weeks' time. If you, if you... Right... Mother's Day is currently streaming for free on uh, Pluto TV. All right. So if you have access to Pluto TV, and even if you don't, download it. It's free. You don't have to pay for anything. Yep. Download that. Watch it. Come back here. Watch our review. And, and have some fun with us while we talk about one of our uh, about our first Tromaville movie. Right. Until then, be sure you slash that subscribe button. And stab the like button. And ringling that grave bell so you don't get buried alive and can stay notified on all of our next videos. Until then, we'll see you in two weeks' time, and we'll see you in the afterlife. afterlife.